boy, Powell really went and did it this time. Uh, he went on 60 Minutes last night, and I don't know if you folks were watching, and I frankly wasn't watching because uh, I know what he's going to say anyway. He's not an interesting person to watch an interview with, and of course somebody like Scott Pelley's not going to uh, – he wouldn't get the interview if he was going to ask any challenging questions. That's kind of how these things go with these big names. You know, you have to make compromises to get them on your show, so by the time you do that, uh, you know, you've given up the ghost, and uh, you know there is no interview. What Powell really had last night was a platform. It's kind of like those interviews uh, that you get on uh, local TV and radio where a local business owner is being interviewed uh, by you know s some guy, and it's basically a uh, paid programming. It's like a big infomercial. That's what the Fed did last night on 60 Minutes. It was a Fed infomercial telling you why you should go out and buy stocks. Now, in uh, you know keeping with uh, typical Fed speak, uh, you know, Jerome Powell never came out and said, I want all Americans to go out and go shopping, and I want investors to go out and buy everything in the stock market. Just buy, just keep buying SPY, just keep putting in those buy orders every day after day, um, allocate more to your 401k. You know, instead, he, he did the, you know, what the natural Fed thing is, which is he used euphemisms. And he massaged people and said everything's going to be all right. And the big thing that came out of last night uh, was that, uh, well, of course, there's this funny clip going around of Scott Pelley saying, you know, hey, so you just basically dumped a bunch of money in the market. You just stuffed it all full of money. Uh, you and, and Powell said, yeah, we did. And he said, you just printed a bunch of money. And he said, well, we didn't print it. We, you know, we punched a bunch of ones and zeros into a computer and uh, created deposits. So, yes, that's what he means. So I guess maybe for, for layman watching 60 Minutes, that, that might have been a little bit of a red pill to realize that, you know, hey, uh, these people just go out and and uh, buy assets with nothing, um, and you don't get the you don't get the privilege of, to do that or to take advantage of that. But all their friends do. Maybe that that clicked with some people. So I'm glad that Scott Pelley at least you know gave the the frank uh, and broke you know a, sort of a frank way of explaining that you know which is the obvious way of explaining it that uh, rather than I guess conforming totally to Fed speak and to using all of this uh, nonsensical language. But overall, he didn't push him really on anything. He was, you know, he's uh, he went in like somebody who was just sort of uh, who was not smarter than than Powell. I'll put it that way. Uh, he went in like he was asking Powell questions because he didn't know, not because you know. It's like when you're what do they say in, in law? You never ask a question you don't already know the answer to. Uh, the same thing should be said for the most part in interviews, um, or at least you know you shouldn't be going in there as a. Uh, that with that same kind of you know general cluelessness you know you need to have curiosity but it needs to be an informed curiosity but of course the the biggest most market moving thing that came out of the whole interview was uh powell said that uh they got more tools left in their toolbox meaning we're not out of ammo uh you know that's one of the the fed loves to use that whole uh, analogy about having a toolbox and by toolbox, they mean we can buy different assets. Uh, we can uh, inflate different parts of the market. You know, because in, uh, back in the 2000s, or I should say, uh, let's say the, uh, the late 90s, uh, let's say the Fed blew up a big NASDAQ bubble. And after that burst, uh, the Fed said, well, hey, we're not a one-trick pony. We can't, you know, we don't just blow up NASDAQ bubbles. We can blow up a housing bubble, okay? And then since then, since... Uh, uh, you know, 2008, they said, hey, let's blow an everything bubble. And uh, Powell is saying, you know, hey, even though it looks like the, the, the air is coming out of our bubble, we've got plenty of more places that we can blow up things and create more bubbles. And the bubbles that we've already created, we can make bigger. Uh, and so what he means by that is we can buy more kinds of assets because we're already buying mortgage-backed securities, inflating the housing market. We've already, you know, been buying all the treasuries that the uh, that the U.S. government's going to issue, we've said we're going to, you know, we told – Powell wrote the federal government a blank check. He said, don't worry about deficits right now. This is not the time to worry about deficits. He's buying up uh, investment-grade corporate bonds, so buying up the corporate bond market. He's buying up investment – or he's buying up junk corporate bonds, uh, but only fallen angels, meaning uh, companies that used to be investment-grade, but ever since this whole depression hit, uh, they've fallen down to junk gra uh, grade, but they've – frankly should have been at junk all along and he's buying up municipal bonds so he's buying up the whole bond market driving people as i've been saying into the stock market well even doing all that uh the the stock market's still bumping up against resistance 
uh, technical resistance. If you notice today, oh, big big spike in the stock market today. Where did it start? You know, where do we close? Around 29.50 on the S&P. So this is not a breakout. Sure, there was a you know there's a, there's a little bump here because of Powell's uh, uh, speechifying last night. But uh, the the market has you know market in quotes uh, has not broken out despite everyone being pushed into the stock market and the fact that you can't get a yield anywhere else. And so, you know, what can the Fed do about this? What tool do they have left in their toolbox? The obvious answer is to buy stocks, uh, or more specifically ETFs, probably, because that's what that, that's how they've been doing the, the corporate, um, you know, the corporate bonds. They've been buying up LQD and JNK, which they, they, they said they were going to long before they actually did, but they finally did start buying up uh, those, uh, those uh, funds. And uh, frankly, if they hadn't, I think it would have, you know, really would have hurt their credibility. And so what, the, what everyone on Wall Street took from Powell's interview last night is that the Fed's going to buy stocks. So everybody today tried to front run that. But they were smart enough uh, to, uh, to not buy uh, once, you know, once we got to that 2950 level. Like we got over it a little bit. We got up to you know, 2963, I think, was the high for the day. Um, but uh, nobody bought over that. Why? <laughs> because uh, – there's a there's a good chance that uh, the Fed is not going to do anything as long as stocks keep meandering along at a good pace here. Uh, that promise was just sort of a – that's an insurance policy. And so in order for the Fed to actually come in and buy stocks, uh, they're, we're probably going to need to have that that second pullback, which uh, you know a lot of the smart folks uh, have been talking about. And actually, uh, we might uh, – you know, we might uh, – be able to, to look at based on today uh, uh, the chance that uh, you know this was our short-term blow-off top today uh, because uh, Sven Henrik, who's a a, a, a tech a, you know a technician guy who you know he's a chartist guy who reads the charts that I have great respect for because I'm not good at the whole chart thing I don't you know it just kind of seems like uh, reading tea leaves it's like a, a Oracle of Delphi stuff to me but it does seem to have some relevance especially in in the very short term when it comes to a lot of these markets and so I find it an interesting uh, interesting things to consider and he pointed out that in uh, 2018 when we had that big sell-off and uh, fall that uh, you know ended with the uh, the Christmas Eve massacre uh, the uh, we the second sell-off the second phase um, of that market, you know, once there was the initial sell-off, uh, and then that, you know, we traded in a range from somewhere like, uh, what was it, like October into December. Uh, when we the breakout to the downside happened after uh, that, uh, after the uh, the market tagged the 200-day moving average, and we just did that today. So it seemed, it, you know, and and rejected, not a massive rejection certainly. But reject, but a rejection, and so it looks like there's a great potential here that there's going to be a sell-off, and then the Fed's going to come in, and they're going to save the day by buying stocks. Now uh, you could say, well, the Fed doesn't have the, you know, they don't have the authority to do that. Well, the Fed, just like everybody else, you can say that the Fed has a, li a living, breathing statute, just like you know we have a living, breathing constitution, according to uh, people who want to change the constitution for their own purposes. Uh, the Fed can just read into their statute the right to buy stocks. Uh, because they read into their statute the, the right to buy mortgage-backed securities. And of course, now they're buying corporate bonds and chunk bonds. None of these things that the Fed is supposed to buy. The Fed's only supposed to be buying treasury bonds. Everybody knows that, but the Fed buys whatever it wants because they have all the money in the world. So I think it's safe to say that, that you know that's where we're headed here in short order. Uh, and if, right after the market closed, Powell came out again and reiterated uh, that uh, the Fed is committed to using a, you know their full range of tools. And tomorrow, uh, Powell is going to be testifying before Congress, and I'm sure nobody will ask him uh, about whether or not he's prepared to buy stocks. Uh, although, if there are any, uh, you know, brave, enterprising uh, Congress people uh, who want to, uh, you know, do some good for the country, uh, they could do that. You know, ask the real man in charge of America, uh, you know, what exactly is going on, because really, Powell is the most powerful man in the country. Much more powerful than president. You know, the Powell tomorrow, if you wanted to, could destroy. Uh, the federal government forever because he controls the purse strings. You know, we're always told Congress controls the purse strings. Nonsense. Nonsense. The Fed controls the purse strings. The Fed is a Politburo, and we all march to their tune. We all work to meet their production targets. 
So tomorrow is certainly uh, going to be a pivotal day, I think, in the short-term history of this market because uh, you know Powell is either going to knock it out of the park or he's going to disappoint. Now, people are going to want some more hints now that he's being so blatant that he's going to buy stocks tomorrow. Um, but if he's too blatant, you know, he might you know, get some pushback from these congressmen who don't frankly know enough to realize that you're just supposed to roll over and do whatever Powell says. So he has to talk in a way that he has to talk over the heads of these congressmen, um, but still, um, you know, make a send a clear message uh, to Wall Street that he is going to buy stocks. So that's all for today. I think uh, I, I don't really have time to discuss what the, the broader implications of all this is because so much happened today. I think I will take time to reflect on that, and uh, I'll have plenty of time to discuss it you know, in the future because uh, this is our new reality. We are living in uh, – you know, fi- we are witnessing financial history unfold before us at breakneck pace. Every one of these steps is completely unprecedented, so I will continue monitoring them. And if you gain anything of value to this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.